So hi, I'm Kevin Osteen with Osteen Construction, and we're here at Thankful Memorial Episcopal Church in St. Elmo. We've been hired to do a renovation in the uh, basement here of this church, take care of some water intrusion, and then clean that area up, turn it into a children's area for the church. To get that work done, we had to start outside, and it started all about two years ago. We had to replace the roof. We did extensive work on the bell tower, replaced the capstones, did a lot of tuck pointing to stop leaks in this old building. It was actually built in 1904. And the second phase, that was phase one. Phase two, we began a waterproofing process on the outside where we dug down somewhere between three and eight feet all the way around the church, tuck pointed the stones, waterproofed, and then backfilled everything to have drainage there so that the water would stop coming through the walls and into the basement. Now with that done, we'll be able to go into the basement, do the renovation, and create the space that the church was after when this whole project started. He ain't tall enough to climb over like the big boys are. You gotta walk around? <laughs> yeah, it's a walk around. Oh. I, I, I like getting poked in the butt by the hall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, Zach, let's show you guys what we're doing here. I'm not the best at explaining all of our processes, but this is uh, not a ton of science behind this. I'll jump down here in the mud. Ugh. Alright, so this church is built sometime in the 1800s, I don't really even know. I think they're going to do an interview for us on the church and its history, but um, I know the mason work is kind of cool. The, the mason that did the rock work on this church was the last African American to get hung in Chattanooga. So, so a little bit of backstory on all this. Um, the stone mason who built the thankful church was a man named Ed Johnson. And why he has national significance is because he was the last African American who was hung here in the city of Chattanooga back in 1906. And it's a crazy story. He was arrested for allegedly committing a, a very heinous crime. And uh, while he was in jail, a mob of 1,500 residents broke into jail, abducted him, took him to the Walnut Street Bridge and murdered him. It was such a big deal that the Supreme Court held their only criminal case in the history of their courts, which was United States first ship, and it was basically looking into the sheriff and a possibly a couple of accomplices on allowing this to happen. You guys can do some research and look for yourself, but Ed Johnson was the stone cutter on this church. And so it was nice to be up on the bell tower and touch capstones that in all likelihood he was the last person to have touched. And we brought those stones down. I made the church aware that we had them and of the relationship to Mr. Johnson. And they put a memorial in the garden out back to him, uh, just commemorating the fact that he was here and he was on this church. So um, they're real prideful on recognition to him. There's a whole courtyard about him in there. Um, kind of a lot of history dates back in this church. So, In 1892, Colonel Johnson, and Johnson is the family name, the people who owned St. Elmo and began to develop this neighborhood, uh, they began to want a, a local Sunday school, a local church here in the area. Even though St. Elmo had a trolley that carried people to downtown, the trip was still very difficult, and they wanted a more local church. So as you can see, if you can see the vacant lot on this side over here, that was the old Johnson estate, and at Colonel Johnson's death, he deeded the lot where Thankful Church stands uh, to his daughter, whose name was Thankful. The church is, while I'm sure they have gratitude, the church is actually named after a person, Thankful Johnson. And the church uh, was built and, and went into service uh, shortly after that, and has been continuously uh, used since then here in the neighborhood. So there is a dirt floor in the bottom and no concrete and there is no footing. So I say that to say the traditional way of building is to have a footing, a block wall, and then inside you'd have a raised slab that would zero out the ability for water to pass under the footing and get into the, into the structure. So in this case, it just had this rough stone all the way down where we dug. The footing elevation is not consistent. 
it kind of goes up and down and so even if they parge coated it or stuck coated it to try to create a solid barrier what they did not or were not able to do is block off the water from going right here and then ending up back in the floor so what we're going to do is come in here and pour a concrete mud seal a footing for you know lack of better terms up against this parge coat and let that cure overnight tomorrow we're going to add a 60 millimeter lifetime warranty waterproofing all the way down the side of this barge coat and down on this mud seal we'll put a barrier board or a fiber board against the wall to protect us back filling the waterproofing that's going to allow for water to sit here and, and follow the drainage board down two four inch perforated french drain pipes at the bottom in case one's ever damaged two four inches will flow better than one six inch and then the current value is cheaper for the two four inch than to have one six inch so we get a uh, little cheaper product we get two pipes versus one and uh, we get a little bit of flow rating not that we'll ever need it and then we're going to backfill with all of our 57 stone that we make which is recycled concrete at our facility uh, check out our other video there on our concrete crushers recycling plant but we'll be adding our product screen 57 stone back so all of this void will be gravel so as it rains water falls in it falls straight down the gravel hits our waterproof in our bottom um, kind of footing if you will and then flows right out down to a catch basin on the other side so a little bit of a harder job for waterproofing did not have a consistent flat surface the border was all right it didn't have a footing but this is how we're going to create a waterproof barrier for this old 1800s church right in the middle of downtown Chattanooga. Wash me in the water Cleanse me in the mercy of your love I need a heavenly touch Cause I'll be backsliding I need a little guiding for my soul Only heaven We are applying a parge coat to be put on before the waterproofing membrane gets across. Okay. That way it is more of a even and solid surface, so to speak. So it makes it easier to put on and yes. stuff? Makes the waterproofing way easier. And uh, what's the name of your company? Tennessee Valley Restoration. Tennessee Valley Restoration. So I hit my knees and I'm crying now, please. I'm gonna call and get time on our concrete real quick. Right, so no, no, no. When would we? Oh, what a chunk this thing. 500 likes and I can show you. <laughs> Tell you what, give me one like and I'll show you. A oh, hundred likes, you throw it at the uh, old Tesla? Oh yeah. <laughs> Windshield or back glass, y'all pick. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, kind of on a little job here that'll go easier for my guys if I get a pump truck, so I'm gonna try to find one even though I'm late in the okay. game. No, I don't need it this minute. I know I don't need it till 1.30. I've got an extra hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. Lou, are you saying that when I call you, I always need something right this minute? Uh, no, not always. Okay, just most of the time. Did you go on camera? Uh, They're asking yeah. about you, man. They're asking yeah. about you. Yeah, I went, I went on camera. <laughs> I told them one like and I chunked the uh, tape measure to the windshield or the back glass on the tape. <laughs> Just one like, huh? Just one like. Uh, that's all it took. That's all it took. You're pretty cheap, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a thousand or a million. I think there's, what is there, Zach? Getting there like marks we're trying to hit there? Well, so it's a long story to be told another day, but that right there, with I didn't have earmuffs, that is how I got started in my excavating company right there. So we, we, gotta, we gotta get that guy lunch, tip him something. We gotta know his story. hundred dollars right there. I wanna know his story. You wanna go over here and make this kid's day? Let's go get it. Let's go make this kid's day.
How are you? Good. Can we bother you for a second? Sure. So we have a YouTube channel. And when I was about your age, I started mowing grass. And now I'm in my company. And I wanted to know your story. Do you mind us asking you? Yeah. It's going to be on camera. Is that okay? So is this your house or are you just for, like, are you making money? Um, we own two houses in Sonoma. We're living on Signal Mountain right now and we're about to move down here. Okay. And my dad used to mow in, like, when he was in, like, high school. Yeah. So I just started doing it. Okay. So is he paying you or is this a yard that you cut on your own? Um, this is our house. My dad, my dad pays me to do it. All right, fantastic. How old are you? I'm 10. You're 10. Where do you go to school? CCS, that's a good school. I have a lot of friends there. So, Tanya Christian School right down the road here, CCS, really good school. So, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie, I'm Joe. Anything you want to say out there on YouTube land? Work hard, it pays off. Make good money in the summer, get to spend on things you want. Any uh, any advice for anybody else that wants to get out there and make some money with the mower? Yeah, just mow. Just mow? Just mow, yeah. baby. How many often, how often do you get tipped? They, they pay you? No one ever stops by and gives you a tip or anything? No, I'm, I'm about to like start asking people to like give me money here. Okay. Sure. If someone gave you a hundred bucks, what would you spend it on? Um, i save it. You'd save it? What do you think you're going to save it for? Like airsoft? Airsoft? Well, Charlie, you made me smile. And literally my entire company started with a push mower about like that. So I want to give you this hundred dollar bill. Thank you. And I want you to go keep doing it and rock on and get more people doing what you do. Thank you. All right. McKinley Excavating is our YouTube channel. You look us up, give us a little like button. What is it again? McKinley Excavating. McKinley. We'll write it down for you. Okay. You ever go on YouTube? Yeah. Maybe we can get a like or a subscribe from you. Oh All yeah. All right guys. Look out for Charlie. He's going to be on here mowing the yard. We'll get some after pictures tonight of it after he gets it all striped up looking good. Thanks, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, man. Well, thank you. All right, good luck. You the man, Charlie. There's 10, right? And that was a tough cut. That was tall grass with the push mower. I mean, he you got the little Honda out there making it happen. So, we're going to spin it on some airsoft. So, you give us a little breakdown of, of what we're going to be doing with concrete? Yeah, so we're going to set up a 100 foot. A uh, 30 meter boom pump up here, and then we're going to bring 10 yards of concrete in. I think that's our boom pump coming in. I'm really excited. That is, it's going to be great, great timing. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to boom in these lines and uh, just keep them having to shovel the mud. Oh, that's probably our concrete. It's not going to be Newman's TNT plant. But uh, we're going to just pump in about eight inch mud seal all the way around this parge coat. yards got a 4,000 psi two inch line pump mix we don't have to use line pump since we're using a boom pump but the line pumps a small rock a half inch rock so it goes through the pump easier okay. uh, we didn't know what kind of pump we were getting so we had to put small rock in it but um, yeah so I don't have a price on that right now but I think concrete's just right under $200 a ton currently so pretty expensive compared to what it used to be and how many yards is uh, in a ton of concrete that's well one yard is almost two tons oh wow so that's 10 that's 10 yards so about 20 uh about 20 tons or so it's gonna call and see where the truck is oh nice so it's possibly on the way it should be hopefully it didn't hit that bridge down there that eight seven. Oh yeah that's <laughs> yeah he said they were going to call to figure out the location of the truck, so it sounded like they got to be on the way at least. It's expensive. <laughs> I thought we'd be the truck going home already. At three? I told you all we were going to do is pour this and go. I told you if you hit your marks. I tried to tell you that. I have, I have blocks of time and schedule. When we hit our, we're ahead of schedule on this project. I'm not going to work you to work you. I don't have to come tomorrow because y'all know what to do down there. We get this done. Tracy will be waterproofing this tomorrow while y'all are doing that. So the concrete's changing. This was never meant to happen. 
load. They paid for our labor today. So I didn't, that's why I said I'm, I'm, that's why I said we get the concrete in, everybody go home. I'm not greedy. You what? Never been greedy, brother. Never. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not greedy. I just have $300,000 a month in bills we have to pay. After we pay, after we pay that, I could really care less. Take care of the equipment's my priority. Okay, this is deep, all the way down, and then around that corner. Around that corner is hard because the trees. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to go on them power lines. I'm, well, we just shove them around. You just feed yeah. me right there, and I'll shove them. Okay, because I can get you under straight. I could have at four o'clock, <laughs> but I couldn't. Uh, I could when the concrete came at one thirty. Oh, it's up. It's been here since one thirty. They said you could be here by two, which is perfect. Concrete well, got here early, and then uh, we got here late. It's fine. Okay, I need. I need to. I can shovel. We're gonna shovel into here, but I can shovel this. Look here. I figured you, you can, if that. you can pull that dumpster, you're underway. I cannot pull that dumpster. Why? Because I don't have a truck. You got an excavator. It's full. It's got dirt in it. Yeah. If I'm going to go under up yonder, i got to be back here. I'll go to that. But because we're going to have a swing or something. I'm saying it's parked out here. And we'll boom our boom in here and let the husband. You can't boom your boom in here. You need to look at the power line. Look at the situation. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get over here on this side as far as I can. That's what I think. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to back up. Slide that outrigger out, and let me see if I can pull it back up here. You follow me? Yeah. You put it where you need it. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll do what we think we can do after you move your truck. Need it this minute. I know I don't need it till 1 30. I've got an actual hour. <laughs> yeah, I know.
Tracy Burton, P and D Construction, doing waterproofing for McKinley Excavating on Alabama Avenue. We're doing a spray tough and dry with a uh, warm and dry board uh, system, and the uh, drainage board is to stop the hydraulic static pressure. Okay, so how do you get these on on the side of the wall down there? We'll stick them to the product that's down there now, and then you know some of it's going the gravels will hold most of it up there. It's it serves as a drainage board and a protective coating against the spray to keep it from getting damaged. Okay. it up against to hold the boards in place uh, we're making it so that we can uh, uh, get everything locked in position so that we can rock out a little bit uh, faster pace on, uh, the rest of the fill so right now what we got is the two pipes uh, two uh, foundation drains running side by side we've wrapped it with uh, uh, non-woven uh, fabric to protect it from getting silt inside and then we've got gravel locking that in place and then also locking in this uh, water board basically. It's a board up and pushed up against the uh, church that will allow the water to seat right on down and go right into the uh, drain. So fast track out. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and this side's done. Okay. Are you happy with everything, how it's going so far construction-wise? 
and this has been a great job. It's been it's been lots of challenges to it, especially on the roof. The stonework here has been has been a lot of challenge and a lot of just fun, a great learning process and a great experience working on this church. Uh, coming in and doing the, the dirt work here and getting the basement dry has been huge. It's going to add so much value and time to the life of this church. Everything that we've done here in this project, we've done with a hundred year lifespan in mind for the work. So everything has been done to, to the very best of our ability, the best quality that we could find in the work, uh, looking at a long term solution to keep this church around and operating for another hundred years. Job went really well. Uh, we uh, uh, overcame different obstacles we had, which really wasn't too much of any obstacle. It's all planned. So, uh, foundation drain, all the uh, dig. We didn't have any problems on the dig. No surprises. Um, just uh, a real smooth project. Uh, great building to work on. Relaxing neighborhood. <laughs> so, um, like and subscribe to uh, McKinley uh, Excavating. Follow us. We'll have lots of fun videos for you to see. And, uh, you know, who knows what uh, surprises Zach will catch us on. And better pray. It better to pray.